If you got a little sweet tooth, well, I got just the present for you today. Let's check it out. Hey everyone, welcome to today's Coffee with Coleman. We are over here at Capital Candy Jar with Dave. They've just moved to this area in the past- Two years. Two years now, and I'm so excited to show you, and I'll be honest with you, my main thing of doing this whole thing is maybe to bribe to get a little bit of candy, because I don't keep a figure <laughs> like this by not indulging in this stuff all the time. Absolutely. I love introducing people to the neighborhood. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how long you've been operating, kind of your journey here. My history is I started my first candy company when I was 14 years old. Uh, my dad was right out of grad school and I wanted money to do things that a 14 year old kid would want to do. And so I asked my parents for money and they said, we don't have any to give to you. And so my mom gave me a recipe. She said, here's a recipe for lollipops. See if you can make these and sell them at school. So I started uh, making lollipops. Every kid in school learned my schedule. There was a line outside each one of my classes. Um, I would bribe teachers with lollipops to start class five minutes late, and I was the richest kid in school for five months, and then the principal shut me down because I was taking too much revenue away from the vending machines. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was my first foray into making candy. And then uh, fast forward, um, I studied marketing and retailing in college and worked for a lot of big box retailers and had a career in, in uh, marketing consulting. And uh, about five years ago, decided I was looking for a change. I remembered that candy had been very profitable for me when I was a kid, and I thought, let me see if I can make it profitable again. And so that was sort of the beginning of the Capital Candy Jar back in April of 2014. Gotcha. And once I decided that I wanted to do a candy company, um, that was in February, and then our first first day uh, was April 14th, uh, was our, our first day making candy. That was in Union Kitchen over, uh, at the time it was located in Noma, and now it's relocated to Ivy City. And we were in Union Kitchen for about three and a half years, and then two years ago, uh, we found this space here in the Hill East neighborhood and uh, opened our store and, and our new production space. And what drew you to the Hill East neighborhood? Um, we had looked for quite a while for a space that would meet our needs, um, that was economical for the rent, and that had parking for you know, people that had cars, and um, some storage space. And I think what it ultimately came down to was, was cost. It was, it was very economical to open a business in this part of town. Um, we don't get near the foot traffic that we would have if we were on a major commercial corridor, and it often surprises people when they're like, where are you? We're like, we're right in the middle of the neighborhood. <laughs> but we really enjoy being here. Most of our business is wholesale, so uh, we don't necessarily have to be in that commercial corridor, but we like having that balance um, of the local community uh, shopping here, as well as having our, our wholesale clients that uh, make up the, the majority of our business. What currently are the most popular sellers that you guys do? Um, our number one selling item is our caramel popcorn. I will put this up against any caramel popcorn in the country, and I'm not gonna name any competitor names, but um, we've actually done taste tests and ours won, so. Our other really popular item uh, is our giant peanut butter cups. It's funny, because when I first started making candy, I started with three types of candy that I knew um, from my childhood. Lollipops, because that's what I'd made when I was a kid, uh, flavored marshmallows, and Divinity. And most people have never heard of Divinity, they didn't know what it was, and we found it was a sort of an uphill battle trying to teach people about Divinity. So we stopped making that. And about six months in, we realized that if we really wanted to be a serious candy maker, we had to start working with chocolate. But I had never done it before, and so I had to teach myself and take classes and stuff and learn how to work with chocolate. And so this peanut butter cup was sort of invented by accident because we didn't know how most people make a peanut butter cup. We just <laughs> made it the way we would want a peanut butter cup. And so um, I always had this vision, there were commercials on TV uh, when I was a little kid of this guy eating a candy bar, a chocolate bar, and he drops it into his jar of peanut butter and pulls it out and like has this epiphany. I wanted people to have that same experience. Normally when you bite into like a, a traditional peanut butter cup, it's really crumbly inside and uh, that's not how we wanted to make ours. So we, we make this, these are four times the size of uh, a traditional peanut butter cup and we use real peanut butter inside. So when you bite into this, it's gonna kind of make a little bit of a mess but, and squish all over the place, but it's gonna be that real chocolate peanut butter experience and it's pretty awesome. You guys don't know this, but we're actually shooting this at nine in the morning and I'm ready to just go elbows deep in candy right now. This sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll cut into one of these and, and, and you can, uh, you can try it out. Perfect. <laughs> One of the things I, I love about what you're doing is you've taken a passion. And like so many people Absolutely. spend their lives doing things of being in the office, but you've taken something that like really resonated with you, it stemmed from your childhood, 
Tell me a little bit about what that's done for you personally, professionally. What's been exciting is I've kind of taken two passions. I knew from the time I was eight years old that I wanted to own my own business someday. And I knew that I was pretty good at sales. Um, when I was eight years old, uh, I used to subscribe to this magazine called The Boy's Life, and on the back of it was this this page of nothing but prizes you could get if you sold greeting cards and stationery. And I remember going around door to door selling greeting cards and stationery to, to get my first bike. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I, I really liked that sort of sales thing and I, I liked um, earning money and, and things. And so I, I always had this passion for owning my own business and doing sales. And I've known that since I was eight years old. I've, I've saved my whole life to open my own business. And it, when it finally happened, I was so excited. So there's that passion that, that really drives me from an entrepreneur's uh, side. But then I'm also, I just love food and I love candy. And so there's that passion as well. And so I get to marry two of my passions into one and in starting this business. And that's been super exciting. Year round, we have five um, full-time employees. And then during the holiday season, because it's just so insane, insanely busy for us. We had 10 additional ones, uh, so we have 15 people working for the Capital Candy Jar right now. So if you're around DC and you want, you're looking for the best candy, you're looking for something that's locally owned, something that continues to give back to the community, give Capital Candy Jar a chance. They will knock your socks off. I promise it. Oh my God. <laughs> oh. That's incredible.